Hey guys, I'm Patricia from PaintAsimpleLife.com and today I have a tutorial for you on how to paint this acrylic painting that you see behind me here. And I made up this painting on the fly as I was filming, so I do kind of hop around a little bit, but I have audio that tells you exactly what I did and why I did it. And also in the description below, I have the materials that I used, all the colors and all that good stuff that you need to know if you want to paint this. Uh, I hope that you enjoy this tutorial, and if you have any questions, feel free to comment below. Thank you for watching! Today I'm going to start out with my largest flat tip brush and my primary yellow and white. I'm going to just mix them together to make a lighter yellow, and I'm going to use brush strokes that are horizontal across the bottom of my canvas. What I want to achieve today is a background that has a gradient. And what I'm going to use is the yellow, and I'm going to make that go into the ocean green and then transition from the ocean green into a violet at the very top. And the way that I'm going to do the transitions is I'm actually adding in a little bit of white at the top of one color. That way when I add in like this um, blue right here, once I add that in, that white just helps blend in the blue into the yellow, that way that you don't have a really just drastic line in between your colors and it's not just like, here's yellow and it stops right there and there's your blue. It just helps it be very transitional and very pretty and just helps with the blending and just looks really, really good. And what I'm actually doing now is I've rinsed out my paintbrush and I added in the blue and the white just themselves once I had that paintbrush rinsed and dried out. That way I could kind of start fresh once I had that transition area and um, also went back and added a little bit more yellow into the transition later, later on just to kind of help with that. You kind of have to tweak with these things. There's really not a solid, you know, certain way of making a gradient. You just kind of have to play around with it. Make sure that you paint quickly enough that your paint won't dry on you so that if you do want to go back and fix something, you can and you don't have to worry about that paint being dry. And like I said at the top here, I'm adding in some of the purple to make it a little bit darker. And the reason why I had the darker colors at the top and the lighter colors at the bottom is to mimic how it is in the natural world where if you look up into the sky you will see really dark blue and when you look at the horizon line it's going to be a lot lighter. So that's just what I personally wanted. You can of course use different colors and you can do completely different than this but that's what I decided to use today. And once I got finished with that and decided I liked it, I dried it. And once it was dried, I decided I was going to make some clouds. So I'm using a little bit of a smaller flat tip paintbrush, and both sides are covered with white. And the way that I'm going to do this is actually dab onto the canvas. And I'm twisting my paintbrush in different directions with my hand as I am dabbing down. That way, the tops of my clouds, where I want them to be really fluffy, they have a variation in the strokes and it just helps the cloud look a little bit more natural and at the bottom I am doing a little bit of kind of a dusting just a sweeping side by side at the bottom to make them have um, a little bit of a crisper line and straight bottom because I want the tops to be really fluffy these are very whimsical clouds I'm I'm making this painting today for my niece so that's just what I would prefer and I'm actually adding in some color in with my clouds and the colors I'm choosing to add into these clouds is what they are by what colors in the background they're closest to so my cloud at the very top has purple in it and as it goes down my clouds are gonna have more blue and then eventually more yellow so it just kind of reflects off of the background onto the clouds. And as you can see, I have also made the clouds that are at the bottom a little bit bigger than the ones that are towards the top of my canvas. And that is because I want the clouds to give an effect to the painting that makes it look like 
the hot air balloon is actually in the sky and that it has that dimensionality to it. And that's why I've made the clouds smaller in the back and larger in the front. And I'm actually going to cover some of the hot air balloon with my clouds later on. So now I'm going to go ahead and start on the hot air balloon once I have my background clouds on. And I have mixed the red with the white just to make a light pink. And I'm using that large flat tip paintbrush again. And what I'm doing is I'm marking around my area where I want to have my hot air balloon. And I'm just going to have to adjust as I go the shape of the hot air balloon. And there's really no mess up in this. You can make it whatever size you want. I'm leaving about mm, probably a closed hands width from each side. And now I am dabbing in a little bit of red paint into that light pink because I wanted there to be a uh, kind of like a gradient also on the hot air balloon, but I wanted it to have texture. So I'm just dabbing this red paint into that light pink and I'm letting this red paint mix in with that light pink background because as I'm moving it around, that red is slowly fading into the light pink. And with me moving around the edges first and then into this area that I've decided to have a highlight, when my paintbrush runs out of that paint, it makes that uh, highlight stand out even more. And it just makes the balloon look a little bit more rounded. And I just like having the different variations and the colors um, on that. Anyway, uh, I'm also going to kind of sharpen up the edges of my hot air balloon just to make sure that everything is nice and crisp. And once I do this, I'm actually going to rinse out my, uh, put my brush back and get out a small rounded brush. And I'm using the yellow ochre and some white. And I'm just making these kind of strings that are coming down from the hot air balloon. And I'm starting to shape out the bucket for my hot air balloon. The bucket's not going to look exactly like what I have right now. But I wanted to have just kind of a general idea of where it's going to be. And kind of like a little bit of a background to it. Then I went into the burnt sienna. And with this burnt sienna, I am going to go ahead and color in what is the inside of the bucket and once I have it colored in I'm actually adding in just a little bit of black with my burnt sienna and I'm making the edges a little bit more sharp and clear to the viewer with this and I'm not really going all inside uh, the inside of the bucket but I'm just going through the edges. And once I'm done with that, I rinsed out my brush again and went back just to the yellow ochre without any white, just the yellow ochre. And I started off with the left side of the bucket. And just to make that kind of dark, just like to mimic the um, hot air balloon at the top where the red there is a little bit darker on the left side. And once I went to the right side of the bucket, I added in a little bit of white and brought that into the left and just kind of swooped it in. That way there was kind of a highlight there too. Once you're done with that, you're pretty much done with your bucket and all of that and you can go ahead and dry it. And then you're gonna get out another uh, small round tip brush or clean out the one that you had. And I'm going to start making flowers. And as you can see, I started off with violet. And I'm also going to make some that are blue, some that are pink, some that are yellow. Just all different kinds of colors for the flowers. And what I'm doing to make them is I am using kind of hook-like uh, movement with my hand. I guess it's more of like little smiley faces, if that kind of helps you um, with that visual. And these flowers really just don't have that much detail. It's just the fact that I have used one color as a base coat for the flower, and then I added in either a lighter version or a darker version of that color and just added it in little tiny spots, and that helped make the flower look more real, but it didn't have that much detail to it. And 
as far as spacing goes with the flowers, I really didn't have any particular idea or plan as to where I was going to put them and how I was going to space them or anything like that. But what I ended up doing was overlapping a few flowers and I had them kind of spaced at random. I wanted to make sure that I did have a uneven amount of flowers though because that is more visually pleasing to the eye. We like uneven numbers for some reason. And that's just what I chose to do with this. And once I was done with that, I rinsed out my brush and I got the green and went ahead and added just some little sprigs of green foliage and leaves and things like that to the flowers and around the flowers and on the bucket itself and also on the strings that are attaching to the balloon. And as far as the strings that are attaching to the balloon goes, I kind of made it look like it was a vine wrapping around those. So I used them um, in that way, kind of making them look spiral going down. And that pretty much just concludes all that is with the hot air balloon um, itself, really. There's not much more that I did to this. Just kind of added a little things here and there. Just step back, looked at it, see what I wanted to add and, you know, all of that. And once I was done with that, I dried it. And I decided I was going to add, you know, those larger clouds that I spoke to you about earlier. And I'm just using that same exact motion that I did earlier with the dabbing but using different angles and letting my paintbrush naturally fade out with the white and coming back with a little bit more in areas that I wanted to be really bright. And I'm also using a larger flat tip paintbrush this time than I was the first. This is actually the same flat tip paintbrush that I used for the background. And I'm also going to add a cloud that goes across the front of the balloon because I want it to even more so add that feel of the balloon is in a the space. It has things that are going around it. It's not on just like a flat surface. And with these clouds as well, I am going to add colors into them as well. So just keep that in mind. If you want to add colors in, you can. You really don't have to, but I liked adding in some blues and yellows just because the blues helped add that shadowy effect to the painting and the yellows added you know, a little bit of highlights. But don't go too crazy with the colors. You still want to have white fluffy clouds in this. Uh, but once you have finished with that, you're pretty much just done with your painting. Uh, the only thing that I'm going to do now is make it have that kind of foggy whimsical effect and I'm doing that with a sponge and I just got quite a bit of water and mixed it in with my white and then dabbed my sponge on a uh, paper towel and then I just went in and kind of dry rubbed a little bit of that white paint on to the painting and this kind of just gives a foggy effect makes it look like maybe it's in some tropical area or by waterfall you know that kind of fog look uh, and I just think it was a nice touch to add to make it look like it's really high in the air and it has that uh, that distance look to it and I mostly added it on to the darkest areas of the painting that way you could really tell a difference and added it around some of the clouds and things like that just to make things edges a little bit more foggier a little bit more fuzzy so once you've had that on you've pretty much finished your painting unless you want to add you know anything else to it but this is how I painted my hot air balloon and I hope you enjoyed the tutorial